Hi, the end is near. I knew it would be sometime soon. Luckily, I took a snapshot of my YouTube stats as of November 5th, 2023, and got myself a shelter that can fit all 972 of us. Maybe if we all squeeze together a bit. Around the time Disneyland was still a brand new park, Walt Disney was quick to say that his park would always be in a state of becoming, that Disneyland would continue to change and grow as long as there was imagination left in the world. Don't tell that to the theme park fans, they'll get pissed! Yeah, change and theme park fans go together just about as well as me and a meat grinder. Not very well. These days, within the theme park community, almost any change you could think of in any park will be met with immense resistance. This can happen even with minor things, such as a change to a restaurant menu, or a change to a merchandise item. I finally decided to visit that new casino that lets you bet on the emotions of theme park fans. Hey! Put it all on Outrage! I can't lose! Of course, you can expect that most of the major resistance to change comes into play when a major attraction is rumored to be, or confirmed to be, removed in the near future. Now, I'm not at all trying to imply that these reactions are unwarranted. These attractions must have been the basis of fond memories for people, and some were even true masterpieces of modern engineering for the time. Of course these big reactions are warranted is what I would say if these reactions weren't also applied to It's Tough To Be A Bug. Hey, you know me, founding member of the It's Tough To Be A Bug hate club. Everyone's seen the recruitment video. Ah! I hate bugs. Do you hate bugs? You should hate bugs too. You should join my club for hating It's Tough To Be A Bug. What have bugs ever done for us other than have six legs, be ugly, and tell lies? Just like Mitch McConnell. Hi, I'm I Hate Bugs. If you join the Tough To Be A Bug Hate Club, you'll get this free collector's edition t-shirt. It's blank. Yeah, from a surface level, these kind of reactions seem really reasonable and have understandable origins. But then, if you take an even slightly closer look into it, you realize that it's all really stupid. And there's no better way to see this stupidity up close than in the form of the almighty petition. In the eyes of an angry theme park fan, these things are like an all-powerful force able to somehow change the minds of high-up executives and make them scrap plans they've already spent money on in order to sate the emotions of about 300 people. Like, really, I honestly do not understand what is going on in the minds of people who attempt to start these petitions, especially as the years go on. With every single year that goes by, another theme park petition will pop up and be promptly ignored by the powers that be. You would think that by now, folks would realize that these petitions just do nothing. But no, they just keep coming! The earliest theme park petition I can remember that gained any decent amount of notoriety came in the summer of 2016 when Disney announced their surprising decision to close Disney California Adventure's version of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror and re-theme it to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Now, I know I have a comedic level of bias when it comes to this, but I believe the outcry to this announcement was one of the most war amongst the theme park fan base. Back in 2016, this was one of the first modern instances of Disney re-theming an attraction to fit in with a relevant IP. You could also say that this is the case when Maelstrom was rethemed to Frozen Ever After, but the only people truly angry about losing Maelstrom were 35-year-old men with Epcot t-shirts. I'm 35 and I'm about to punch a hole through my f***ing wall! Meanwhile, with Tower of Terror, this was an attraction people actually liked. And, by Disney theme park standards, it was still pretty new. When DCA's Tower of Terror closed, it was still only 12 years old. Most rides tend to live to at least 15 years old or so before the possibility of them closing becomes more of a reality. The announcement of this closure was especially jarring for many fans, considering the fact that the entire Disney California Adventure theme park was four years fresh off of its major overhaul that used Tower of Terror as an anchor for the park's new theming. So getting rid of it when the overhaul was still so new was just really surprising. As such, a multitude of angry theme park fans took to change.org and made the Save the Tower of Terror petition. It got over 35,000 signatures. Luckily, it seems that most people agree with me here and that this is truly the most warranted of all the petitions that have been made to save theme park rides. 
Speaking of which, in May 2017, rumors began to circulate that the Great Movie Ride was to be closed and replaced with a Mickey Mouse themed attraction. Turns out, these rumors were true as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was eventually announced to be the ride's replacement, causing the uproar of about one room full of people. Oh, oh, I am so mad! Oof. 1,271 people. That's less than the Great Movie Ride's hourly capacity. Instead of actually abiding to this petition, all Disney had to do was give these people the whole Great Movie Ride to themselves for like one evening. Within 10 minutes or so, at least 40% of the people will go, Wait a minute! I hate the Great Movie Ride! Really, it seems like every single Disney ride, no matter what, will get a petition from random people begging to save it. In fact, I'm willing to bet that if it opened in these days, even something as vile as Superstar Limo would have gotten a Save Superstar Limo petition when it closed, even though Superstar Limo is cold, wet, and it smells like piss. But, you may be asking, what about when a petition just isn't enough? Because clearly, all of these petitions usually tend to work so incredibly well. Not a single attraction is closed since these petitions started picking up steam online. Well... In the fateful year of 1997, the Orlando Sentinel newspaper announced the fact that Disney was planning on replacing the Magic Kingdom theme park's version of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride with a new Winnie the Pooh dark ride. One of the biggest motivators for this was the fact that Winnie the Pooh was a really popular franchise at the time. It was selling merchandise like crazy. And so, what better way to sell piping hot Winnie the Pooh merch than with a shiny new gift shop at the exit of a shiny new ride? Of course, this news was not well meant amongst many diehard fans of both Walt Disney World and Mr. Toad's Wild Ride itself. This was an opening day attraction at both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom. To this day, any time Disney even thinks of altering or closing an attraction that was there on a park's opening day, it is immediately met with the strongest level of resistance you could possibly imagine. Not Hose World! Think of the park's history! You can't close Hose World! Not Hose World! If such news broke today, you could expect the usual litany of online petitions and such. However, this was back in the 90s. People back then had to get a bit more creative when it came to expressing their outrage over rides for children. As such, a campaign known as Save Toad was born. The main hub of this movement came in the form of a website, one which is still up today in all of its late 90s website glory. It details all the actions of this group of Toad-likers and contains lots of pro-Toad propaganda such as listing off all the pieces of media that contain Mr. Toad himself. It even has a question and answer section, where nearly every single question and answer boils down to You gotta admit that Mr. Toad's wild ride is starting to look a little bit outdated, right? Respectfully? Nuh uh This is probably the furthest extent I've ever seen anybody ever go for a theme park ride. They did everything from making custom t-shirts, stickers, and pins, to listing the phone numbers of high-ranking Disney executives so you can call them up and demand action. Yellow? What the f*** is your problem?! One of the most notable things that this little group did was what they referred to as Toad-ins. These were arranged meetup days in which people supporting the cause to save Mr. Toad's wild ride would all show up to Magic Kingdom in matching t-shirts and do nothing but ride Mr. Toad's wild ride for the entire day. While initial events started small, they eventually became larger and larger as more people showed up to try and save their favorite ride in Magic Kingdom. This thing got so large that the people planning these events even showed up on the news. It's really an amazing example of community and togetherness for a common goal, especially in the early days of the internet. All these people gathered together for one common interest. It was something to behold. And it's amazing that such a thing hasn't been repeated ever since. Maybe because it didn't work. It never works, it never has, and it never will. I feel like the only time that a major park has brought back an old ride is when Kings Island brought back the old antique cars. Oh, now, see, that petition worked.
So even if these petitions never seem to work, that's not a bad thing. It's really cool to see people unite for a common goal out of passion for a ride they love. Whether it's an attraction they grew up with or one they came to love in their adult life. No matter what, one of these things seems to pop up for any closing attraction and that just goes to show that people can be passionate about even the most obscure attractions from their favorite destinations. Oh, 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 hear that, hear that? That's the end of the world alarm. I had it installed last week. It's probably a good signal for us to go to that shelter I mentioned earlier. Well, here we are, everyone, our lovely shelter. It's cold, it's wet, it smells like piss. Just like Superstar Limo! I can't lose! <laughs>